and we'll be up here shortly. Uh, coming off the win at Watkins Glen in the sale in six hours, the first for the team in competition. You've had your first win in the Coney Challenge just before that. Uh, running on a, a high there, uh, doing a lot of good things here. How's it going to continue here at Mid Ohio? Well, it's it's going to be interesting. I mean, I, I'm I'm really happy. I'm really fortunate to be uh, right now in uh, in Coney Challenge and in Rolex Series with two good teams, two good cars. Uh, so that's you know that's enabling me to have this this good little run here. Um, but we we got a tough race ahead of us. Uh, we had a little curveball thrown at us. My co-driver Emil Asentado has a little under the weather, so I wasn't planning on qualifying. And then at the last minute, we had to make that change. Um, so it still remains to be seen uh, how the race is going to pan out tomorrow. Um, that's sort of up to how he does tonight. But uh, the car was really good. I'm really happy with it. Um, we made a change before qualifying. It didn't quite work out as we had planned. Um, but, you know, I'll take a front row starting spot anytime, so I'm pretty happy. You mentioned that all the winners this year have come from the front row? Yeah, that, that I think bodes well for us, so it's between you and I, you know. <laughs> okay, well, we just mentioned Lawson Ashenbach won his eighth different pole winner this season. Tell us about your pole winning lap. Yeah, it was, it was pretty good. Um, the track is pretty greasy. It's in the afternoon here. It usually, usually gets a little hairy, but um, we had a pretty good car. Um, I made some changes in the, in the car, some bar changes that seemed to help uh, quite a bit, and... Um, you know, I got some clean laps. Um, you know, I did it on like my maybe third or fourth lap. I'm not for really, the flyer lap. I'm not really quite sure when that was overall. But um, yeah, we had a great car. The Pontiac is 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 going to be really good in qualifying here. But we're a little worried about the race pace. Um, you know, we just don't have the straightaway speed that most of them have. And uh, you know, it's going to be tough to to hold him him behind me going into <laughs> turn one. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if he's two car lengths ahead of me <laughs> going into turn or whenever that turn is. So, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. Uh, I think we're gonna have a good car for the race, and, and you know, our car seems to be pretty good on tire wear for the most part. So hopefully we can uh, just get a good start and keep it up front. Well, tell us about how the season's gone so far. And, you know, it's, it's been a tough, tough year for sure. Um, you know, I, I um, you know, we've had uh, some rough, unfortunate events pretty much all year. I mean, Laguna, uh, you know, passing for the lead and, and uh, getting tangled up with Dirk and uh, Lime Rock, we had a broken sway bar um, about maybe 30 minutes into the race while leading. So, uh, you know, it's just been frustrating. It's a new team, you know, new engineer, uh, new car to them. And, uh, you know, it's, it's obviously going to be a bit of a, a bit of a, you know, struggle initially. And we started to put it together. We just really, it's just been an unfortunate event. So uh, hopefully we can, like I said, keep it up front and, and get, a, uh, get a good finish out of this soon. Sure. Okay. Uh, questions for our front row starters in the GT race? Um, tell us a little bit about what you like about the track and what you yeah. think is challenging about this track. Yeah. This, uh, I mean, I've said it to everyone, Mid Ohio is my favorite track in the entire country. And I've been to most of, the, most of all the tracks around here, and it's, it's very technical. I think it's very difficult. The elevation changes are really hard to deal with. And, um, you know, it's, it's a driver's track. If you can drive here, you can drive anywhere. And, uh, you know, it's like kind of one of those places, I guess you could say, that separates the men from the boys in a way. And, um, you know, it's, it's, I love coming back here. It seems like every time we come back here, we have success. So I, I almost, even though I'm from Maryland and I live in Florida, I almost call this my home track because this is probably the place I've been the most. So uh, and I enjoy being here for sure. Same question for Jeff. Yeah, um, it, it's not one of the tracks that immediately springs to mind for me when I, you know, when I list my favorites, but somehow I seem to go really well here every time, uh, both in Coney Challenge and now in Rolex. So uh, it's, it's quickly moving up that list. Uh, you know, the tracks changed a bunch over the last few years when they repaved it and changed the curb, so that kind of threw a curveball at me. But, uh, you know, starting the front row, I guess I can't be too unhappy with the place. Are we looking at two driver changes tomorrow? To be determined. Um, uh, at, at this point, Emil wasn't able to uh, even complete a lap. Uh, he was pretty under the weather. So uh, I think you'll you'll see something funky out of the 69 car, that's for sure. Is Nick Longy available? Nick is on an airplane right now. Okay, he was uh, the third driver of Watkins Glen in the six hours. Any more questions? Tell me. Paul? No. Two thousand. What's that? Two thousand? Thanks. Uh, all right. Thank you very much, guys.